Safe by Accident, Taking the Luck Out of Safety. In this video, author Dr. Judy Agnew and Dr. Aubrey Daniels talk about understanding human behavior scientifically and how that approach can lead to a safer workplace, particularly when investigating something that's gone wrong. One of the ways that the science of behavior can really help in safety is in the area of incident investigations. So after an incident occurs, there's an investigation to find out why it happened. And, and there's some of our clients have a, a lot of different things that they look at, a, a lot of different potential root causes for accidents. But unfortunately, all too often, all of that gets boiled down to it was the worker's fault. So they will look to see if the worker was trained in what they were supposed to be doing. Um, did they have the skills and the tools that they needed? And if the answer to that is yes, they did, but they still did something at risk, then the tendency is to blame the worker. Punishment is very difficult to use effectively because it, it requires that you do it immediately, uh, that you do something that in fact is, is uh, meaningful to the person in terms of something that would have an, actually have an impact on their behavior, and all of this is very hard to do, you know, particularly on the spot. And if you don't do it on the spot, it's not going to have much impact. What punishment typically does from a physical standpoint is to shorten muscle fibers, which reduces flexibility. It reduces not only physical flexibility, but it reduces mental flexibility. So you can't think as well, you know, when you're under a threat of punishment as you can when you're not. The problem with that is it doesn't explain why a worker who's been trained to do the right thing, has been given the tools and probably wants to stay safe, why would that individual do an at-risk behavior that ultimately led to an incident? So most accident investigations stop short before they answer that critical question. And until that question's answered, we can't create the safest possible work environments. We really need to look at what causes an hourly worker or a supervisor or manager to do something that might lead to an accident. There are reasons they're doing that. The science of behavior helps us understand those reasons and informs us in terms of how to change that to change the behavior. What we know about behavior is behavior is sensitive to immediate consequences. And if you see a number, something's already happened, so you can't really respond to it immediately. So the best way to motivate people in this way is to help them build safe working habits by observing behavior, by reinforcing in some social way, some, rec some form of recognition, which may be a thumbs up, a smile, uh, or uh, telling somebody, hey, that was good. That's exactly the way it's supposed to be done. And then uh, when we reach levels of uh, safe behavior for a crew, for example, when every time they're observed, they're observed to, do, to be doing things safely 100% of the time, then we can celebrate that. ADI has a process to analyze human behavior, a process called the picnic analysis. We have a tool called the picnic analysis, which sounds like something fun, but it's essentially looking at what are the immediate and certain, positive immediate certain, that's the pick, negative immediate certain, that's the nick. Uh, it's looking at those consequences uh, and understanding which ones are most powerful and which ones are truly driving behavior. What we know our clients have done in the past and what have been, has been very effective for them is really taking a person who's done an at-risk behavior, walking through one of these analyses with them in the context of an open, trusting relationship, and that really drives down to what are the contingencies that are driving that behavior. Then what management can do is set about making changes so that that individual and others don't repeat the mistakes of the past. Now when somebody's had an accident, the consequences of that accident usually are the most important thing in determining whether they'll do that again or not. So to come after the fact and, you know, chew somebody out or discipline somebody in a variety of ways is going to have little impact on the actual behavior that produced the accident. It's more likely to interfere the relationships between the people. Once you've done a picnic analysis, that's just the first step. You do have to identify what are the changes that need to be made. And the trick here is understanding that those changes will only be made if we put consequences in place for making the changes. So good safety leadership is about identifying what leadership needs to do and holding each other accountable for making those changes.
safe by accident, taking the luck out of safety. For more from Dr. Judy Agnew and Aubrey Daniels, and to purchase the book, Safe by Accident, visit the website safebyaccident.com.